The RadioMaster Ranger is the most powerful 2.4 GHz Express LRS module in the world. But that's actually not the thing about it that I think is most interesting. I'm Joshua Bardwell, and you're going to learn something today. Express LRS is an incredibly high performance, incredibly long range control link. And what makes it different from other modern high performance control links like TBS Crossfire, TBS Tracer, and Immersion RC Ghost is that it is created by open source enthusiasts, hobbyists. It is not put out by businesses who are trying to make money. Well, that's not entirely true. And that starts to get to the heart of what I think is so interesting about these Radio Master modules. The original Express LRS hardware was hand soldered by enthusiasts uh, and was just completely inaccessible to the average hobbyist who didn't want to solder up their own module or their own receivers. Then people figured out that you could flash Express LRS to FreeSky R9 hardware and get the advantages of FreeSky's really quite good hardware manufacturing, but with the flexibility and performance of the Express LRS system. And then Express LRS kind of blew up. It just got super popular and it's easy to see why. It has similar range and latency and features to things like Crossfire, Tracer, and Ghost, but manufacturers can make this hardware without having to pay for the research and development of the software. And that's kind of unfair. It's unfair that these open source developers do all the R&D work for free and put out reference designs that manufacturers can follow and sell hardware and the manufacturer can just make money on the hardware, the customer gets a lower price, and it's unfair, but it's fine. The Express LRS devs are fine with it. They're happy with it. The customers are happy with it. And the only people who mostly aren't happy with it are competitors like Team Black Sheep and Immersion RC. Well, that's not true. There are other people who are unhappy with it, such as the people who bought this Beta FPV Express LRS module, which was released with some missing components on the board that meant that it was impossible to flash firmware to it. And that's not the only example of a company putting out half-baked Express LRS hardware that then ends up with people buying it and being annoyed. And that is when I, as, as I said, when I reviewed a different beta FPV module that also had manufacturing problems, hmm, sensing a theme here. As I said in that video, the biggest problem with Express LRS is that people are not used to thinking about their control links in terms of, is this good hardware or is this kind of half-baked and shoved out the door with defects? They're used to buying a module and expecting it to be correctly made and correctly performing. And that's just not true for all Express LRS hardware. And that's what's so exciting to me about these three new Radio Master modules. Because Radio Master has a history in the FPV community of making relatively good, relatively reliable hardware. Uh, this right here is my Radio Master TX16S. It's been my daily driver in one form or another for several years. And most of the people who buy a TX16S get a unit that works for a good long while. And that doesn't sound, that sounds like really faint praise. It works, it's not dead out of the box mostly, and mostly they stand behind it if there's, with their warranty, if there's an issue. Well, in the FPV community, we kind of have low standards. We're used to getting crap hardware from Chinese manufacturers who don't take any responsibility. And if you get a dead unit, maybe you'll get a discount on a replacement unit. And for Radio Master to come in at a half decent level, a pretty decent level, maybe not the level of something like a Futaba or maybe a Horizon Hobby Spectrum radio, but still pretty freaking good. That's saying a lot. So I could open up these modules and show you the components on the inside and we could look at it and go, ooh, ah, and I don't know if there's good stuff or bad stuff in here. But you know who does know if there's good stuff or bad stuff in here? The Express LRS devs. One of the things that you need to look for when buying Express LRS hardware is, has the manufacturer worked with the Express LRS devs to get their designs vetted? The way it works is the manufacturer sends the product to the Express LRS devs and they open it up and they look at it and they go, oh, no, 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 you missed a capacitor here or, oh, no, 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 you did this thing that's wrong. This oscillator is out of spec. They 
For free? I think for free. I mean, the manufacturer has to send them hardware to look at. They don't buy the hardware. But I think for free, is the, they just look over the designs and they, they find mistakes that the manufacturer has made before the product is released. And you would think that every manufacturer would take advantage of this free consulting service that would make their products better, but many of them don't. But I've confirmed that these modules were made by RadioMaster in uh, cooperation with the Express LRS devs, and so we can be reasonably confident that they've been given the once-over and that they don't have any serious flaws, major design defects, or anything like that, especially when combined with Radio Master's relatively good history of making solid hardware and taking responsibility for their customers. The Ranger module comes in three form factors, the big boy, the micro, and the nano. The nano is used with radios like the Radio Master Zorro that have the light module bay on the back. The micro is used with radios like this TX16S that have a JR module bay on the back. And the big boy module can be used with either or none. More about that in a second. So this module comes with just a flat back. And then you use an adapter like this to adapt it either to the JR style or the light style module bay. And that adapter is going to plug into the back of the module and then it screws onto the back of the module with some included screws and it plugs into the back of your radio. But why didn't they just design this thing in the correct form factor? In fact, why does this thing even exist at all? All three of these modules have exactly the same capabilities. They all support up to one watt of output power. They all support the fastest 1000 hertz uh, packet rates that ExpressLR supports. They all support the latest firmware. What's the point of this extra big, extra chonky, extra expensive module that hangs out the back of your radio, taking up lots of space and weight? What's the point? Well, one of the points of this module is that there are radios out there that don't have a JR bay in the back of the radio, but that can still interface with these Express LRS modules. This is actually not one of them. This is a DX6, but if you have a DX9 or higher, you can actually interface with an external module using the Crossfire protocol, which is what these modules use. And you could literally, I don't know, get some double-sided sticky tape or something and stick it on the back of your radio and wire it up with a wiring kit that you get from Radio Master, uh, and you could use it with your Spectrum DX9 or higher, or the Futaba, I think it's the 12 or higher. The high-end Futaba radios can also do it. And that means that people who want to use those high-quality radios, but who don't want to use those older legacy control links, they want a high-performance modern control link, can do it with this module. But there are other reasons why you might choose the Thick Boy module over the Micro or the Nano module. Uh, the normal way that Express LRS is managed on Radio Master radios, any radio running the OpenTX or EdgeTX operating system, is that you run a Lua script. And a Lua script is a little program that runs on your radio, on the screen of the radio, that lets you change the parameters that of the Express LRS system, the output power and so forth, other parameters. Now, if you've got a radio like a Spectrum or Futaba radio, they don't run Lua script. So how do you manage the system? And in order to answer that question, let's just power up this module by plugging in a battery to the, oh, what's the rated input voltage? Let's not blow it up. What's the rated input voltage? Let's not blow it up. Almost plugged a 4S battery into my expensive module. Now it is killed forever. This was a bad idea. What's the input voltage? 6 to... Oh, yeah! 6 to 4S voltage, baby! I'm okay! I didn't blow it up! Woohoo! Let's power this module up by plugging in a battery to this XT30 connector on the bottom. The battery can take between 6 volts and 16.8 volts of 4S LiPo. Uh, the purpose of this XT30 connector is twofold. Number one, some radios can't run the module at full power 
because their radio's internal power supply just can't deliver enough power to the module safely. And in that case, even if you set the module to its max output power, it won't actually go to max output power. It'll say it is, but if you actually measure the output power, which we're going to do later in this video, you'll see it's not making the rated output power. So in order to be sure that you're making the maximum rated output power, you can plug an XT30 in here. You don't need a separate battery. You can just knock this little knockout out of the back of your battery cover and run a wire from your main your main radio battery. Um, but it makes sure the radio is going to full power. The other thing you can do is you can plug a secondary battery in so you're not sucking your controller battery dry quite as fast. If we plug that in, the module will power up and we will see one of the advantages of the fancy thick boy module, which is that it's got this built-in screen and this joystick and these buttons. And that means that we can manage the Express LRS system. Shut up! I want it. There we go. I want to demonstrate this without connecting it to a radio. We can manage the Express LRS system through the module. And that's nice because uh, even if you have a radio that runs the Lua script, a lot of people just find them cumbersome and awkward and they like to be able to go through the menus and change the settings simply by using the joystick on the back of the radio. That's kind of convenient. One of the problems with a high-powered Express LRS module is that it runs down the battery on your controller much, much faster. And yeah, you can use an auxiliary battery via the XT30 connector, but wouldn't it be better to just not waste all that energy in the first place? The big version of the Ranger module has a feature that helps address that. You see, it has an accelerometer and a gyro built into it. And that means that it can detect when the unit is set down and detect when the unit is sitting still. And if we go to the motion detect setting, we can see that by turning on motion detection, watch what happens. So here I am and I'm holding the radio in my hands and I'm flying the quadcopter and you can see that it's outputting one watt. If I then disarm, and don't forget that Express LRS knows that your disarm switch is AUX5 high for armed and AUX5 low for disarmed. There's a reason they require that. Uh, the module can tell that I'm disarmed if I then set the radio down and wait. After about 20 seconds, it drops down to 25 milliwatts. And then as soon as I pick the radio up again, you can tell I've moved and it immediately jumps back up to full power. So hopefully this means that whenever I'm not actually using the radio and it's just sitting on the table, I am saving battery power, but this shouldn't disrupt, hopefully shouldn't disrupt my normal operation of the radio. I guess there's a theory that if the quad is far, far away and the radio goes to low power, then I could fail safe. And I guess if the quad is far, far away and you set your radio down on a table, that could happen. But Realistically, I think there's a lot of people for whom this is just going to be a net, net win. And let's face it, if you don't like it, you don't have to turn that option on. One of the things that makes the Thick Boy module stand out is these two buttons to the left and right of the five-weight joystick. And they are buttons. They're not just uh, colorful blinking lights. Uh, in order to demonstrate how they work, we are going to connect to the web interface of the module. Uh, the module has been powered on for a few minutes without a connection, and so it seems to have automatically gone into web interface. That's very convenient. And that should mean that if I go in my phone and I look for uh, Wi-Fi networks, I should see Express LRS TX Wi-Fi network being broadcast. It's a hotspot that the module has set up, and the password is Express LRS Shocker. And if I just connect to that, and then we open up our web browser and we go to the address 10001. Uh, some devices will do this automatically. Like if I just tap this sign into Wi-Fi, it brings it up automatically. So all modern Express LRS devices do this. Receivers, modules, radios, they all have a web interface where they set up a hotspot and you can manage some of their settings easily in your phone or laptop web browser. In our case, we're going to go to the buttons section and you can see here that we can change the button colors to whatever we like. Uh, I don't know, more red for one and green for the other. And then we can change the button shortcut. So we've got two buttons here and we can assign up to two actions per button. So for example, uh, let's say that this first button will enter binding mode when we do a short press three times. 
for those of you who don't like putting in uh, binding phrases, you could just easily go bup, 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 and put it into binding mode. We can increase the output power. We can change the video transmitter band and channel, send the video transmitter settings. We can also jump to specific menus in the uh, radio, in the module settings. And we can control short press, long press, long press for longer than so many seconds. This is extremely configurable. And you've got these shortcuts on the outside of the module. That's pretty cool. The other thing that the Thick Boy module does that the other two modules don't is it is capable of going to two watts of output power. And that makes it the most powerful 2.4 gigahertz Express LRS module in the world. Now, a lot of people feel that one watt is plenty. How much power do you really need? And I would say that if you are using lower packet rates, like 50 hertz or 150 hertz, then uh, even as little as 250 milliwatts is enough to get more range than most people are ever going to need because of the limitations of your video system. But if you're running at faster packet rates, like 500 hertz or 1000 hertz, or if you just absolutely need the most possible range and penetration, the most possible link reliability, then more output power is obviously better. And the reason that this guy can go to one, uh, two watts and not just one watt is uh, because of its heat dissipation. And that goes back to the metal case and the fan design. In fact, let's take a look at the output power of this module and its heat dissipation in a little more depth. So we can start with the unit outputting 25 milliwatts and we can see here with our Immersion RC RF power meter, it is right about dead on at 25 milliwatts and we could continue going up 50 milliwatts, uh, 100 milliwatts, uh, 250, and each time it is pretty close to the correct value. And if we max out at 1,000 milliwatts or one watt, we can see it is darn near dead on at one watt. And that's exciting because, well, first of all, it's nice to see that it's roughly hitting its max output power. But also, I haven't got the external XT30 plugged in at this moment. That means that my TX16S is able to give it enough power to run off the internal battery without uh, supplemental power. It's kind of nice. Not all radios could do that, but this one apparently can. Now, this is only one watt. This is not the promised two watt max output power. In order to unlock that, there are some steps you have to go through that I'll tell you more about, obviously, later in the video. But let's just let this sit for like 15 minutes on max power and see if it overheats and shuts down. See you in like 15 minutes. Well, all right, the radio has been sitting here for about a half hour. The RF meter has turned off and gone into sleep mode. So we're going to have the big reveal together. The output power after about a half hour of sitting at a full one watt output power is one watt. Uh, we should run the test with the smaller module as well. And sure enough, it is also outputting one watt or a little more than one watt at max output power. So uh, the Radio Master Zoro also capable of delivering full power to this uh, module without any external power source. But it's going to suck your batteries down for pretty darn quick. So especially if you got these little 18, oh, oof, they're not even 18650s, are they? Oof, they're like 18350 or something. Yeah, you're probably going to want an external battery in that case. But the modules will output their rated power and keep outputting it without a concern about heat buildup. The modules ship with this dipole antenna, which is going to have a roughly spherical coverage pattern. There aren't going to be any big dead spots in any particular direction relative to where the antenna is pointing. There will be a small reduction in range uh, when you are lined up with either end of the antenna, but that's not going to be noticeable to most people under most real world conditions. If you need even more range, you can spend about, I think it's about 15 bucks to get this Moxon style antenna, which is a more directional, higher gain antenna. It's going to give you more range in one direction at the expense of less range in other directions. Basically, the way this antenna works is that you point the antenna at the aircraft and you get a lot more range out here with a small reduction in range to the sides and a big reduction in range behind you. Also, bear in mind that this is not a patch antenna. If it were a patch antenna, you would probably expect to face the flat side of the paddle at the aircraft. That's not how it works. You face 
the narrow edge of the antenna at the aircraft. Given how much inherent range Express LRS has, especially if you're only running at the lower packet rates, and especially with the up to one watt output power, most people are going to get fine range out of the dipole style. However, the additional range of the Moxon is going to mean that you can get equivalent range at lower output power for longer battery life. You'll get just a little bit more as long as you don't need to fly directly behind yourself. I guess you could go with the Moxon and just turn to face your aircraft. Uh, although if you're under the FPV goggles, that might be easier said than done. Throughout the video, I've been kind of teasing you with the potential to get even higher output power from this module, and it's time to make good on that promise. It turns out that the heat dissipation and power amplifier in this module are enough to increase the output power safely, not just to one watt, but to two watts. And that is only true for the big thick boy module, not the micro or the nano. They're limited to one watt, like basically every other Express LRS module. But the big boy can go up to two watts. You just have to go in and change a couple of settings. And this was revealed to the world by Wesley Vardy. He's an Express LRS developer and a long range test pilot. And rather than just steal his clicks, I'm just going to put a link to his video down in the video description. His instructions are very clear, concise, and uh, you get to listen to his nice Australian accent while you're at it. Um, that makes this an incredibly unique piece of hardware in the Express LRS world because there is not any other 2.4 gigahertz module that I'm aware of that goes over one watt. This is it. And you're going to pay for the privilege. Have we talked about price yet? Yeah. The big boy module is $100. That's a lot for, well, it's it's a lot for a Crossfire module. They're only 60-ish dollars. For an Express LRS module that usually comes in closer to $40, that's a big premium. It's worth pointing out that you are getting things that you don't get with any other module, including higher output power and these button shortcuts that let you access some functions, as well as you've got an OLED screen and joystick on the back. But there are, there are other modules out there in the 60-ish dollar price range that also have the OLED module and so forth. The Axis Flying Thor comes in a similar form factor, can do one watt and has a screen and module. It can hook up to a Spectrum or Futaba radio or just like this one can. Um, so you're really paying for that extra, that extra two watt output power pretty much. The other two modules come in at $40, which is completely in line with other Express LRS modules with similar capabilities. And I would wager that you are getting some of the best build quality out of any of the Express LRS modules just based on Radio Master's history and reputation. Um, so what does that mean at the end of the day? Uh, if I was looking for a new Express LRS module, these would be near the top of my list. Uh, Radio Master has worked with the Express LRS devs to get all of the kinks out of these and make them as user friendly as they can be. I can't be sure that we won't run into a kink or run into a manufacturing issue. Everything is sort of possible, but I feel like your odds of getting good hardware that you can rely on are as high as with the Radio Master modules as pretty much any other Express LRS hardware available. Now, if you do pick up one of these modules, the very next thing you're going to need to do is flash firmware onto it. And if you are new to Express LRS, then that is going to be a little bit of a learning curve. I have an Express LRS definitive starting guide video, and I recommend everybody getting into Express LRS checks it out. Number one, because it's going to teach you what you need to know to get comfortable with and know all the options about the Express LRS system. But number two, because if you're not sure whether the learning curve of Express LRS is too much for you, watching that video might make you go, oh yeah, I can do this. Or it might make you go, oh yeah, this is not for me. Um, so I'm going to put a card on screen linking to that starting guide video, as well as the Express LRS 3.0 release overview that I made, showing you some new features that have come out in the latest version of Express LRS that are, are pretty, well, some of them are going to be like, oh, I have to have this, and are going to get you to switch to Express LRS, maybe from whatever you've got. Those cards are on screen right now. I'll see you there. Happy flying.